Hello everyone. I want to follow up on my MPP Solar LV5048. That's low voltage, 5,000 watts, 48 volt hybrid charger controller inverter MPPT, and it is a dual MPPT. This is a split face for the North American. That's U.S., Canada, Puerto Rico the low voltage and the split phase like 240 volt 220 volt 230 volt whatever you want to call it and you can adjust all of those voltages right in here so i have been running it y'all did see me make a video saying that uh in a little chat that i really regret buying these tesla batteries and connecting to it uh, um, because one of my biggest concerns is thermal runaway with that and these things catch fire so I haven't put them underneath heavy loads. I haven't wanted to get them like really out of balance. And um, I have been using it though. I've got a few monocrystal panels connected to it outside. They are Renogy panels, I believe. I can't remember if they're 300s or 325s, just to be honest. But I just got a few of them connected out there in a series to the maximum amount of input voltage that this likes. And I, when I say maximum, I'm well below that in case there was a spike, but the maximum I felt safe to connect here with it. And it's been working and I run it day in, day out right now, kind of like a little test. And we run some things here on it while we're working, fans and tools and uh, stuff while I'm doing some construction here at the house and it helps on the electricity bill some right now. And I'm also running something else here on it, I'll show you. I have for a while now also been running my incubators on this. Yeah, these incubators became important for me to run here on it because we had so many power flashes on our utilities here at uh, where we live out here in Texas that I was worried about my incubators and I was worried about the eggs, you know, get cold and, and messing with the, the, you know, the timer and all that keeping up with the settings for my eggs here so we've been using it for this as well and it has been great it's been worry free on having to deal with power flashes since we put this here so as i said before the tesla batteries they are not really what you would want with one of these inverters just being all honesty um the voltage ranges on them are just not what meets with a lot of your um, inverters out there and your charge controllers. It's just um, it's a little off, just a little bit off, but it's just a little bit off from the ranges that they normally go with. But nonetheless, there is enough setting variance in this that you can use them. Now, I do hear people say, well, you cannot discharge these down as far as you can this brand battery that brand battery blah 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 well that's true you can and nor does tesla in their cars they don't want that big discharge they don't want that big variance because it will kill the life cycles to these batteries but in that variance that you can you still get a lot of power actually delivered right there so um for instance, I guess if you want to say, for instance, you know, think about this. If you will look up and find the parameters that Tesla is running these batteries in their car, you will find they don't put a very far discharge rate down on these hardly at all. And look how far and how powerful one of those cars can be. Now, I know it's with a lot of these packs, but... That is the very point that they are doing. Don't pull them way down and then run them way back up. It will crush the life of these batteries. So I've been working in the window that I'm supposed to be working in on here on the voltage. And so far, it's been uh, really good. So nonetheless, I do want to show you guys that I'm using it. Um, the reason that I'm not using it in a heavier sense than I am is I do not want to do a permanent mount. This is just a little temporary mount and it's going to be coming down soon because there is going to be a walk-in closet built right here. And I will be here insulating 
and drywalling and tape and embedding this area right up in here. So it'll soon come down. It'll have to find a new home. Um, we are not permanently going to stay here in this uh, duplex that we're turning our house into. So I did not want to put this whole solar array up, put this whole unit in here to turn around and just move it again. What we did want is we wanted to be with a system that's free of the power grid that when we're abroad on the other side of the world, we don't have a continued electricity bill at the place that we are living. And that when we do come in, we have instant power we can just turn on. So that's the point of me trying to go off grid. Of course, I want to be free of the utility company. Um, I really have no use for the utility companies. And I think it's kind of ironic because here in my area, uh, a lot of the YouTube videos, when we see them, they are running Reliant Energy ads here on my videos. <laughs> And I think that's kind of funny because I'm anti-power company, so that's kind of hilarious. But nevertheless, um, our plan is to put this system together back here at this shop that I'm building. We plan on staying in a fifth wheel back there after we get all these projects done. That'll probably be this upcoming year. And at that point, we plan on using this system hard. In fact, I will probably go ahead and order one more and uh, parallel it. Now, I did have a gentleman recently that said that he paralleled his and one of them blew out. And he may have done it right and he may not have or he may have felt that he did it right. There is a lot of settings that you really need to check and know when you parallel two of these units together. You need to really do your due diligence. You have one setting wrong, something is probably going to go wrong. I've always said that again and again when people say this about a unit and that about another unit claiming they're bad. A lot of times it is user error. Straight up user error. I'm not saying that uh, my viewer that commented on that did that. I'm just making a in, gen in general assumption that a lot of times it's going to be user error. Now another one of my commenters commented that his um, his lights will start flickering and that he'll put a load on it like hit the button on his microwave or something puts a load back on it and boom his lights come back on stop flickering and uh, there's no more problem and then after a while it does it again you need to go into your settings because in the settings this thing has a deal where it will go into an idle mode if there's not hardly any load being pulled on it go look that up in your manual you need to change that. You either need to disable that mode or you need to change that percentage of load. But as you stated in your comment, you had virtually no load happening at the time other than some LED lights. The unit was probably not recognizing hardly any kind of draw. LED lights don't pull much. And it probably put it into a standby and standby mode, it's kind of like a sleep mode. And so that's what was happening most likely there on that you need to go in there and disable that feature okay well i hope some of this information will help some of you out um i'm still indecisive what's going to be the future of these tesla batteries i'm looking at other battery systems right now i'm spending a lot of time looking at the saltwater batteries uh that was a company here out of the united states that um several numerous investors invested in this company that built these batteries um, the country the company ended up going bankrupt. I think bankrupt. I think even um, Bill Gates was even one of the investors in it. But it went bankrupt. Its assets was being sold off. Um, a company overseas bought rights to those things or at an auction or whatever was going on. Anyway, there's a second company with the identical technology now. But now I hear that the original company was reinfused with additional like $33 million to try to get it picked back up on its feet again. The technology is great. So I'm really looking at the salt water batteries. They're non-toxic. They claim they can go 90 to 100% discharge with no damage. They can be froze and thawed back out and 
they will charge back again maybe not at the full capacity they once did but they can survive a lot of critical conditions so that's one of the things i'm looking at right now um, between now and the time that i really need to hardcore press this back there at my shop maybe something good will come out there that'll really catch my attention but right now i'm swaying away still from lithium altogether i think it's just a transitional source right now that everybody's using for for backup and i don't think it's going to be a long term if it was such a great thing there would be so many other people out there looking for a better source for uh, power storage for battery backup well that's my opinion on that i'm gonna let everyone go i hope everybody's doing well i hope this video helps somebody out just a little bit if my two commenters that were having a problem with their unit uh, just look at those things and everybody take care please like comment share and subscribe